I'm John Buchanan. Now, it feels like with the arrival of Logic 11, the most important conversation we need to have surrounds the session players. We'll get to that in just a moment. Should we find out how they work first? OK. So, OK, the session players are here. They have their new category. We've always had drummer, or at least what you say, we've always had drummer. We've had drummer for a really long time. But effectively, the session players have now been expanded to include a bass player and a keyboard player. We'll come to those in just a moment. But to really understand what's possible now with the session players, we'll start with the drummer region. It feels like these options have expanded too. Having selected that I want to pick a drummer, I then have a bunch of different drummers that I can choose from in acoustic categories and electronic categories and percussionists as well. I'm going to go for some indie disco drums. So what I can do is to select that drummer style, press create, and what will happen is that I get a drummer region, and these have been around for a really long time. So if I press play, I think probably most of the people watching this channel will have heard and seen the way that drummer works before. Sure enough, disco drums. OK, so effectively, just in case this is brand new, the way that the, um, the session instruments work is that rather than having a, an audio region or a MIDI region, what effectively you get is this kind of overview region, this yellow region here, which shows us low frequency content at the bottom, in other words, bass drums. And then we get mid-range content as well in the middle if I make this a little bit bigger. So these are going to be my snare drums. And up here at the top, we get the high frequency content, hats, cymbals, that kind of stuff. In terms of actually configuring this performance, I get a complexity slider, which literally allows allows me to make the pattern more or less complicated. And effectively, you can see that as I back this off, individual hits disappear or appear, depending on how complex I want them to be. And then intensity, you can kind of think of as a sort of almost velocity control. If I drop the intensity down, all of the regions are going to sort of, or the little waveform display, I don't really know what to call that. It's not a waveform display, it's not a MIDI display, but this overview display, there we go, effectively is going to smallen, get smaller, smallen, always making up words on this channel, uh, to demonstrate the fact that effectively the kind of MIDI strength of performance has dropped away. Then effectively what I've got over on the right hand side is the opportunity to introduce fills, make those fills more complex, introduce swing, a whole bunch of uh, things there. But effectively what I've really got is this kind of quick overview and that's drummer. And we've known about drummer for a while. But what's new is that if I now come back and press plus again and return to the session player area, I have an opportunity to add both bass and keys. Now again, if I choose the bass player, what I can do again is to come and find whichever style I want, indie disco here again, I might as well. So I'm going to add a um, an indie disco player and effectively immediately, we get a couple of other things like, for example, this tick box, which says use default chord progression for new regions. OK, well, that suggests that there is a default chord progression, which Logic wants to introduce with the arrival of this bass player. Suddenly we've got harmony as well as rhythm. OK, well, I'll tick that box and we'll see what happens when I press create. We get a region a bit like our drummer region. Sure enough, another little overview, if you like. But of course, what we're now getting as well is a chord progression, a chord progression that has been introduced with this particular choice of drummer. So let's hear it and then we'll explore exactly what this means. Feels to me like this is all quite fast for disco. I'm going to take this down to 105. I think Benny and Bjorn would approve. OK, so Effectively now what I've got is a bass line which is imported with its own chord progression and of course it's kind of supporting the drummer. Now because I selected the same playing style of course there is a relationship now between the bass and the drums but I can make that even more locked if I like by effectively saying rather than just using a regular rhythm within this pattern what I can do instead is to click here and I can come and ask it to follow the track or another track within the project. Now the four on the floor pattern is the drummer so if I select this option what we're going to see is that the waveform display is going to update because it's looking at the kind of transients from the drums and it's basically making that rhythmical feel apply to the bass player. So this should now feel even more locked than it did before. <laughs> And 
and there's our fill at the end of the drums. Okay, so now we've got a chord progression and we've got a bass line which kind of locks to the beat. Sort of feel like I haven't played anything, which is um, unusual um, for this kind of track or sophistication of track, I suppose. So what we can do is to go further. Obviously, I've got similar uh, functions again, by the way, in terms of complexity, intensity, fills, all that kind of stuff. I've got the opportunity to decide whether or not the melody of the bass line is going to sort of use the root notes only or whether or not I want to introduce some other options here. In other words, some sort of passing notes or additional notes that aren't just root position chords. I can decide how many octaves I want this to kind of play out over so effectively the bass line becomes a bit more rangy, all that kind of stuff. Okay, let's go further and add a keyboard player. So with the keyboard player, Again, I've got a few different playing styles. I can decide whether or not I want broken chords, whether or not I want block chords that are just going to kind of follow the pattern, which I think we will for this. I've also got a freely option, which is a bit more expressive and just kind of goes where it wants to, depending on how I configure it. There's an arpeggiated approach where if I want that kind of unchained melody approach, I can do that if I want, or I can choose a simple pad, which is just literally going to play a series of chords following the chords of the imported chord progression just to make those part of my project again. Let's go with block chords for now. Again, what it's going to do, because we already have a chord progression here, is it's going to effectively just create a region which is going to follow those. It's not going to replace the chord progression. So again, if I just press create, we're going to find that the chords are the same up here at the top. I'll come back to those in a little while. And again, by now, what effectively I've got is some familiarity here. Again, my complexity options over on the left and fills on the right. However, there are some things here which are specific to the keyboard player, like the opportunity to decide whether or not I want to, for example, remove the left hand, here is the left hand, or remove the right hand. So effectively what I can do is to make things simpler if I want to. I can also uh, choose different options for the left and right hands in terms of voicing, some of those things we just looked at with the bass line, and so on and so forth. Okay, so straight out of the box that sounds like this. And let's just put in some more fills and some more variation. So if I introduce the fills and the complexity, um, and again, let's maybe lock this also to the um, track, the uh, drums track, so that everything is being locked to that same idea. Okay, so why is this causing such controversy? Well, why isn't this causing such controversy might be a slightly better question. Okay, so um, full disclosure, I made a version of this video before I did the live stream uh, to announce a whole bunch of things on the John O. Buchanan Music channel. So do go and have a look at that if you haven't had a look already. And um, whilst it would be too strong a word to say that I experienced some backlash from what I had to say about AI and these resources within that live stream, definitely what's been really interesting is to gain some different opinions about these tools. So let's start with the positives. A lot of people, or a few people certainly said, I'm using these features to allow me to build backing tracks which I then want to rehearse to, and they are mere kickoff points for the creativity that I'm choosing to use Logic for. No problem. That's fine. If that's what you want to do, then absolutely no problem. The boundary line for me gets crossed with technologies like this when people start using them for composition. And here's why. Remember that even though there is a range of resources here, like the complexity slider and like the intensity slider and like the fill amounts and all of the tools that we have available to us, there is a limitation to how far these tools can go before they reach their edges. And if you then consider how many people are using Logic, 
and have access to these resources. It doesn't really feel like it would take very long if people use these tools for composition before effectively we found ourselves in the Truman Show. That from a creative perspective, we're all living within a dome where there are walls and all we really want to do is to go and push at them. That's one way of looking at it and that seems a bit dystopian maybe. But the really important thing to say is why on earth would you want these tools to act as the creative trigger for your musical kickoff points? Why would you not want that moment of feeling like you had made a discovery by plugging in a keyboard, splatting down some keys, and discovering that there was a relationship between the notes that you played that you liked and that your ear was drawn to? It's a completely different experience. Here, we are regulating bits of information that have been made for us. Effectively, we are sculpting a massive block of musical content that has been made for us. And at best, what we can do is to chip away at those things in order to make them smaller than their kind of enormous musical footprint that they're offering us right out of the box. Well, that's one way of being creative, I suppose, and that is what sculptors do all the time. But it feels to me like the pioneering stuff that goes into making music, the idea of us being creative, is that really what we want to do is to start with much, much, much smaller building blocks. Let's use an analogy. Okay, so let's suppose what I need to do is to write 200 words today. That's my job on a particular topic, maybe even on a topic about AI. I'm going to write an essay about AI. Okay, do I want to use AI to generate my essay about AI? In other words, do I want to use ChatGPT or one of the other resources to effectively take the thoughts of others that have been condensed down into a place where I can then generate 200 words of content. Well, if I do that, then effectively that essay is going to be the same essay that would be available to absolutely everybody, which means that my task then is to sort of personalize it by reading it through, getting rid of the bits I don't like, maybe rewording a few sentences. Well, that feels to me like I haven't really written that piece of work. I might have edited it in some way, but I haven't written it. Now, the alternative is that I start from scratch and I write all of those 200 words myself. And maybe at that point, what I do is to run it through a spell checker just to make sure that my spellings are correct. Well, that's not AI in a traditional sense, but nevertheless, that is technology intervening in order to make sure that my grammar is good, perhaps, and certainly that my spelling is good. Is that too interventionalist too? Clearly, what I'm talking about is the fact that there is a sliding scale. To what extent do we want our creativity to be aided by resources like this? And everybody has a sliding scale. Some people won't use presets. Some people definitely won't go to any of the loop browser, for instance, because they feel those resources feel to those people like the building blocks of creativity that those blocks are are too large. And we all have a different kickoff point for that. But I would definitely say that some of my favorite musical experiences have come when I have no musical chops, when I haven't learned harmony, when I'd never sat in front of technology before, but I sat down at a piano and I discovered chords one, six, four, and five. And I made the discovery that the Beatles discovered. And I also made the discovery that J.S. Bach discovered 300 years ago, which is that there is something unbelievably satisfying about my ear, our ear, the musical ear, discovering those things. And in those moments, I didn't care that the Beatles had discovered those chords before me or that J.S. Bach had. I felt like a pioneer. I felt like I had suddenly discovered the secrets of the musical universe. And it didn't bother me that other people had discovered those things too. And that relationship with creativity, our feelings about what it is to begin the creative process, whilst they are going to be personal and everyone's going to have a different response to that, and I'm very interested to hear your thoughts, I nevertheless feel like anything that jump starts that process so that we don't have to go looking for those things, so that we're editing rather than creating, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that that is in any way the best use of our creative time. Will and I were talking about this a little while ago, and he's right. Someone said, what I want AI to do is to stack the dishwasher and wash the dishes so that I can spend more time making music. Not the other way around. We've got to be really careful with these resources if we're using them for composition. If you're making backing tracks, fill your boots. But if we suddenly discover that there are lots of pop records, lots of pieces of music for TV that are using these resources in order to just get there quickly, is that the best use of our time? Let me know what you think.